When Alexei Navalny died in prison, many people for the first time thought about the dangerous political prisoners are facing in Russia. And there are hundreds of political prisoners in our country. Hi, my name is Lisa Nestrova, and today I'm going to tell you about the political prisoner for whom I'm really scared, Sasha Skachelenko, an artist and musician from St. Petersburg. Last November, she was sentenced to seven years in penal colony, even though doctors warned that Sasha could simply die in prison. Who is Sasha Skochelenko? A one-person band. I loved playing music, drawing and performing in the theater. She wrote about herself. Привет всем. Меня зовут Саша Скочеленко, и я голодная художница, свободная художница из города Санкт-Петербург. As a schoolgirl, Sasha participated in the TV program Game of Wit, where teenagers argued on social, political, and philosophical topics. Something like, a citizen does not have to be a patriot. Memory makes a person unhappy. History teaches nothing. Sincere friendship is possible only between people with the same income. At the age of 17, Sasha enrolled to study directing at the Theatre Academy. But in her fifth year of studies, she quit and transferred to the Department of Free Arts and uh, Science in St. Petersburg State University. She majored in anthropology and graduated with honors. In one of her courseworks, Skochelenka investigated the visual evolution of New Year dresses by Russian presidents. Yeltsin, Putin, Medvedev, and Putin again. Sasha analyzed the scale of and angle of uh, the shot, noting that the background was becoming more and more blurred, the Kremlin walls were getting smaller, but the figure of the president in the frame was growing from year to year. And here is the conclusion she came to into her student work. I quote, this compositional solution is showing the emerging imperial tendencies in the contemporary Russian culture at that time. After university, Skochelenko worked as an illustrator and photographer, cameraman and editor, collaborated with NGOs and independent press. In the early 2010s, she made videos for PAPER, a local media in St. Petersburg. She was reporting from protest rallies, polling stations during voting, or, for example, from the feminist theater festival Eve's Rips. A few years before her arrest, Sasha suddenly became interested in renovation. At first as an art project. The point was that in a patriarchal society, this is considered to be a traditionally male occupation. Skochelenko decided to renovate a room in St. Petersburg communal apartment. And the point was only women doing the work entirely with their own hands. Sasha learned how to mount a plasterboard, how to do the wiring, how to prime and paint walls. Since then, the this, this skills even allowed her to earn a living. I hung a chandelier and curtain rod and attached a cross bracket to a shelving unit. It was an order. In total, it took four hours. All the work was cleaning. It's probably one of the coolest feelings in the world to get something fixed or done. I had to drill into a concrete wall to install the curtain rod. And even for me, I weighed 45 kilos. This is absolutely doable. Uh, there was a time when I thought it was an unrealistic job for a woman, Sasha wrote at the time. But Sasha Skochelenko's passion, in her own words, has always been music. It seems she plays all musical instruments and her girlfriend Sonia Subotina is proud to say that Sasha is multi-instrumentalist. Hey, hey. Я меняю последние рубли биткоины и продолжаю свой бег. In St. Petersburg, Sasha has created a music venue for everyone, Free Jams. Uh, their musicians who don't consider themselves professionals could perform without fear of being laughed at. Sasha has always tried to use the power of music to help others. For example, she has held music jams in mental health uh, institutions as an art therapy. Я внезапно чувствую, как где-то внутри меня вдруг затеплился слабый, еле заметный, свет. 
The topic of mental health in general has concerned Sasha Skachelenka for many years. In 2007, she went to a state hospital for psychological help. Sasha was diagnosed with depression and bipolar disorder. She was almost forcibly hospitalized in psychiatric inpatient clinic. After struggling to get out of there, Sasha realized that all of us in Russia would benefit greatly if we addressed our psychological health. She also realized how much archaic prejudice around the topic in Russia society. In 2014, she published a graphic novel called A Book About Depression, a story of a girl, Sasha, in search of a cure. She later drew several other comics, for example, What is Mania and Notes on Depression. Sasha prepared the Ukrainian translation of the book about depression herself with help from her publisher. Here is what she wrote about it, I quote. Every day I worked on this project, I thought that I would be in prison as soon as the book was published. After all, there was already a war going on between our countries. This was my personal timid gesture of diplomacy and peace. Shortly before the full-scale invasion started, she traveled to work as a counselor at a children's camp in Ukraine. And in 2022, during the first days of the invasion, the children Sasha Skachelenko worked with began to write to her, Why are you bombing us? Sasha says she couldn't help but react, couldn't help but at least try to stop the horror that the war has brought to our world. But how could an artist react? Sasha carried out an action. In March 2022, she changed the price tags in the supermarket for stickers with other numbers, data on civilians killed in Ukraine. She was reported to the authorities. Since then, Sasha Skachelenka has been in pre-trial detention. All these long months, Sasha was mocked and bullied by law enforcers. I will not rape you just because I have eyes, an operative told her during the search. And the other members on the investigative team kept repeating that she should find a husband and bear him children, not, quote, do nonsense. They did not specify what exactly they consider it to be nonsense, anti-war beliefs, or the fact that Sasha is not going to find husband. She wants to live a long, happy life with her girlfriend, Sonia Subotina, and it is a mutual feeling. The first weeks in detention, Sasha Skachelenka nearly starved. Food delivered from the outside was taken away from her, and she can't eat the food this is prepared in the detention center for medical reasons. The thing is that Sasha has celiac disease. This means that her body does not digest gluten. This is she cannot eat any baked goods, pasta, almost all cereals, and this is what the prison diet mostly consists of. Only later, when Skachelenko's health began to rapidly decline, the prison authorities, fearing public outcry, began to prepare gluten-free food for her. But it did not help much. Up until now, after every meal, Sasha has symptoms of poisoning, sharp pains in the stomach, nausea, vomiting. We were live blogging from every hearing of Sasha Skachelenko's case. We saw with our own eyes that she felt ill right in the courtroom, how she was not allowed to take medicine or even drink water during house-long sessions, how she was not allowed to go to the toilet, was not allowed to change the battery in her cardiac monitor. The doctors who managed to fight their way into the pretrial detention center to examine Skachelenka confirmed that her health was deteriorating. At one of the hearings, a cardiologist confirmed that Sasha might need a pacemaker in six months. Doctors know that her heart rhythm slows down with pauses of up to three seconds. She has already started fainting because of this. Patients like this are supposed to be monitored on a regular basis by their relatives and uh, undergo systematic examinations for which the detention center does not give permission. When the cardiologist said in court that Sasha could die in such conditions, prosecutor Irina Nikandrova just laughed out loud. The prosecution in court generally considered Sasha's health problems a great subject for jokes. 
when the defense was listing Skachelenko's positive characteristics, another prosecutor, Alexander Gladyshev, asked her, I quote, did you behave well in kindergarten? Did you eat your cereal? Sasha couldn't go to kindergarten because of health issues. And people with celiac disease cannot eat cereal. The prosecutor must have known that, at least if he read the case file. Surprisingly, all this cynical abuse did not make Skachelenka bitter, nor did it make her withdraw. She remains an open and sociable person in prison. At the end of 2022, um, in correspondence with me, Sasha spoke very warmly about her cellmates. Just listen to this. I've had four cellmates during my time here. Elia was my spring cellmate. She was released after sentencing. Olya is my summer cellmate. She left and served her sentence at the end of August. Autumn cellmate Lena was recently transferred in Vologda. She will wait there for an appeal. Their characters were very suitable for the season in which they lived with me. They each had their own joys and their own difficulties. Now I have a winter soulmate, Masha. Given the time of year, I was expecting someone cold and closed off, but Masha is very friendly, outgoing, optimistic, and dressed up like the winter holidays. Despite her health problems, Sasha Skachelenka has not stopped making art. During her imprisonment, she has drawn several comics about the life in the pre-trial detention center. Her exhibitions have been held in Germany, France, England, and even in Russia. Unfortunately, I can't do my most important creative work, music, in the pre-trial detention center. Any musical instruments and even solfeggio textbooks are forbidden here. So I play on matchboxes, bars, tin cans, on my own body, on tables, and sometimes I sing in the courtyard. Despite my incarceration, I have been able to release a music single on all major platforms. I play noise music and my project is called Lastichka Plus, Sasha wrote to me in one of her letters. According to Skachelenka, she gets a lot of letters. I want to know the correspondence with a girl of primary school age who writes to me from the very first day of my imprisonment in the pretrial detention center. Her name is Oksana, she sends me fairy tales, tells me how she spent her days or how her cat given birth to kittens. For my birthday, she gave me three color origami cats. I made up a fairy tale for her about Princess Bunny and Puss Puss the cat in order to gently and carefully explain what was happening to me. The girl then came to the court hearings of the case of Sasha Skachelenka as well as dozens of other caring people. <laughs> The judges did not like this kind of attention very much. Uh, at some point, the bailiffs of the court were instructed not only to push people away from the entrance of the courtroom, but also to clear the corridor where Sasha was escorted so that she could not see those who came to support her. And after the session in September 2023, one of the escorts used tear gas against the people who came to the court. They ran out of the building gasping for breath. After that, Kachelenka's girlfriend, Sonia Subotina, was taken to hospital by ambulance. Just before the verdict, addressing the court, Sasha said, Why fight if we are all we have for each other in this world full of troubles, disasters and difficulties? Can all the wealth, all the power of the university redeem your loved one from the captivity of death? No. Not money, not power, not a career, not a flat, not a car. We are all we have in each other. And I have loved ones who are dear to me more than anything else in the world. They come to this hall and they care about my life, my health and my freedom. They don't want me to go to jail. My elderly mother, my sister, my girlfriend who was diagnosed with a terrible cancer are waiting for me at home. Now, Sasha Skachelenka is still in the pretrial detention center in St. Petersburg. She is waiting for an appeal. It feels like a respite. There are no more grueling daily meetings, no more interrogations, no more mocking prosecutors and rude bailiffs. But this does not mean that Sasha and her loved ones no longer need our support. 
you can and should write letters to Sasha. One important thing, though, they have to be in Russian. All letters go through prison censorship, which doesn't allow inmates to correspond with anyone in a foreign language. I don't know what will happen to Sasha now and then in the colony. Whether she will receive medical care, whether she will be able to continue drawing and composing music. But I do know that political prisoners cannot be forgotten after they have been sentenced. And that any involvement in Sasha's life is important.